Hi, I'm Ben Hirsch from Campers in RV, and today we're going to be talking about setting up and preparing for your first camping trip. When pulling your RV for the first time into the campsite, the best practice is have a buddy. The buddy is going to help you direct it, and one of the things to be careful of when you have someone that's guiding you is that you can see them at all times and they can see you. So that's your rear view mirror. They need to be able to see uh, that mirror that you're looking at them and you, you, you need to be able to see them and them see you. It's really important because otherwise there have been accidents out there where people get severely injured if they don't keep safety first in mind. But having a buddy will help tremendously. Whether you're pulling in a Class B motorhome or a huge fifth wheel hooked up to your truck. Everything in between, it's really helpful. Another thing that's really helpful is if you can find a pull through site, it'll make your life a lot easier. You pull in, you're gonna make sure that you have enough space on both sides for your slide outs if you have them on both sides. If you have slide outs on one side, you need to make sure you have enough room for that slide out. Make sure you have someone watching as you push out those slide outs so that you have enough room, not hitting trees. Another thing that when you're setting up for the first time, that you're gonna to wanna to have your connections, whether it's electricity, water, sewer, as close to the connections on your camper as possible. So oftentimes they might be in the back side of the campground or the campsite, in the middle of the campsite or on the front side, and you're gonna to wanna to align your RV so that it best matches that, where you can maximize uh, the distance and also have enough room on the sides for your slide outs and also make sure you don't hit any trees while backing in, which is what your buddy's for. So one of the hookups at the RV park is water. Typically water is as easy as hooking up to the spigot at the hose at the campsite and then hooking it up to your RV and turning it on and it works. A couple things that you're gonna have to note the first time is there's gonna be different nozzles, is the best way to call them, on your RV that connects that either you're gonna be filling a tank or gonna be going directly from city water. Make sure it's turned on to city water. If it doesn't say it on the particular nozzle, read your owner's manual and that'll help you identify uh, which hookup you need. Also, on the site side, sometimes there is a nozzle that is meant for your fresh water from the campground and sometimes there is a black water tank flush nozzle. Do not hook up to the black water tank flush. That's meant for dirty water. One of the things that's an aftermarket item that's really awesome that I'd recommend is there's actually filters that you can attach to the fresh water lines to make sure the water coming into your campsite is fresh. Another thing, and this is especially important down south, is a pressure regulator. They're really cheap, just a few dollars but the pressure regulator, some of the pressure at campgrounds is very, very high. Making sure you have a pressure regulator will ensure that you don't have any blown lines inside the RV that could damage your RV, really ruin a trip fast. It's a really cheap uh, item to buy, whether it's from a dealer or on Amazon, it's a few dollars. I'd make sure you have a pressure regulator for that first hookup as well. So when hooking up your sewer tank to uh, the dump station or to your site sewer, uh, you want to do it really carefully. So one of the most important things, and I know this sounds basic, is make sure all the gray and black water sewage lines, all of those valves are closed. We don't want to get any sewer or black water on us. So then what you do is uh, you use the clamp and you twist it on on the RV side. You then run the hose, uh, open up the sewage cap at the campsite. I recommend having gloves throughout this process. It'll really help make sure that uh, uh, none of the sewage gets on you, and you hook it in there. Make sure that it's sloped so that the sewage has a natural um, flow down, and then when you need to, you can open up the sewer lines and actually have them drain. One of the things to be careful of is making sure that you run the sewage first and then the gray water second. Well, why do you do that? Well, the sewage is big and bulky, if you want to think of it that way, and what the gray water is is that's generally, you know, dishwater and other semi-clean water. It's not clean, but it's, it's, it's not totally dirty. And what, by opening that one up second, you'll be making to flush all of your tubes out afterwards with the gray water and not doing gray to black, which then the last water going through your, uh, through your tubes is the nastiest water. So just a tip of advice. So another hookup at your campsite is your electric hookup. So this is one you want to be very careful with. On every campsite I've ever been to, they have breakers on them. If they don't, be super careful, but there's usually breakers on the campsites. Make sure those breakers are in the off position. Either that's usually down 
could be up, but just read it. Make sure that that's in the off position. Then you can go ahead and hook up your electric to your RV and then to um, the actual box that's on the side of the campsite. One of the things to consider is there are different hookups for 50 amp and 30 amp and make sure you're hooking up the right cord. There's adapters to go from one to the other. If you're at a 30 amp site and your camper is a 50 amp, no, you won't be able to use both your air conditioners. So once you have it all hooked up and it's safe and you can then turn the breakers on and know that uh, you'll be safe with that hookup. So when hooking up to the campsite, know that all these options that we've talked about, water, sewerage, and electric, all at the campsite, those generally are gonna be considered uh, premium or deluxe or whatever the campground calls them, but it's gonna be a more expensive option. And if you are okay being off the grid or only having one or two of those amenities, you oftentimes can save a lot of money on your first camping trip. So setting up all the other items on the campsite, a lot of it comes down to that initial positioning of your RV, making sure that your RV is set up so that it's easy to hook up the water, the sewer electric, or wh whichever hookups you have, that your jacks can go fully down um, and they're, they're not hanging off a cliff somewhere, which can happen. Uh, making sure that your slide outs can go out without uh, hitting a tree. Making sure your awning can go out. A lot of times that's the last thing that we think of, but the awning can go out and you're not hitting a tree. So before you actually unhook your, your RV from your truck or your tow vehicle, your SUV, your car, I'd make sure that all these different areas have space on all sides. Otherwise you may be restricted and after you've hooked up everything, you're now looking to unhook it all and, uh, and set it up again. So you back up, make sure you have enough space on all sides. So we've already hooked up the water, sewer and electric. You can actually put down your jacks, make sure it's level. Uh, one of the reasons to make sure it's level is if your RV is not level, it's going to put a lot of strain on different appliances and different systems. One of the biggest one is your slide outs. A lot of times we find customers have slide outs that get burnt out or have major issues because the RV wasn't level, the frame is twisted, and it creates a really big hazard when trying to get it in or all the way out and the slide outs just stop working or burn out. So making sure it's level, having an extra level on hand is really handy to make sure that uh, not just the level that's on your jack is there. So front to back level, side to side level, making sure those stabilizers are down, jacks down, the best you can get them. Uh, then you can go ahead and put your slide outs out. Then you can go ahead and set up the inside of the RV. But it's really important to have your RV as level as possible. Some other things that you might want to consider bringing when you're going RVing is um, even a tent. So personal experience, I've been RVing where we've had so many people come to the campsite over, overnight that we actually need to set up a tent as well for some people. Other things is grill. Are you going to be cooking outside? Do you have an outdoor kitchen? Do you need a grill maybe as well? Uh, how many chairs do you need? How many mats do you need? Um, just how are you going to be using that RV? Once you think about how you're going to use it through those that first weekend or the first week trip, you can really think of all the items that you'll need to make sure that everybody can get as much enjoyment out of your RV as possible. I hope this video has helped you prepare for your first camping trip, decide where to go, and everything that comes with your first RVing experience. Whether you're going by yourself, with a pet, with family or friends, it's going to be a great experience. I hope you enjoy it. At Campers in RV, we pride ourselves on being the RVer's trusted resource. We have a blog and website full of information for you to do research on, finding out where you want to go, videos like this. I encourage you to explore it at this link below, and I hope you have a wonderful time on your first RVing adventure.